you know I was gonna start this whole intro thing by saying I can fix it, but I don't think we can fix this. So, new trailer for Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Wasn't planning to talk about this, even when I saw that it had come out. Because I thought, I'm sure I won't think any worse on it than I thought on the first trailer, which I didn't really like, if you saw that. Um, but then I watched it. And it hurt. It, it I felt physical pain watching this. I'm being metaphorical. I didn't literally, but... I did feel my, my, like, the heat in my face, in my rising flames, on the side of my face. Um, so, yeah, I, fairly big fan uh, of Wreck-It Ralph. I've cosplayed as Fix-It as fix Felix. Um, yeah. So, before I even go down this rabbit hole, let me start by saying I may be in a crazy majority on this because I've said in the past, and this is generally true, that between when I see uh, a new trailer, piece of news about a development in a film series or show that I like or what have you, I generally try to avoid finding out what other people think about it before I record my views, because I want my views to be my views. I don't, um, as much as I can help it, I don't want them overly tainted by having read other think pieces or, you know, other people's hot takes or whatever. Uh, in this case, I, I didn't dive too deep, but I did like just sort of browse a couple of things just to see if I can get a general tendency. And other people seem to really, really like all the stuff that I hated in this. So maybe, maybe, and I'm, I'm gonna put this up front, maybe I am just a grumpy bastard. Like, I, I'm distinctly open to that possibility. But holy God, did I hate this trailer. Oh, it made me cringe so bad. Okay, let's start by backing up. One of the things that was wonderful about Wreck-It Ralph was that the references to actual real-world video games were not only few and far between, they were almost never lingered on. Like, really? There's only two that come up, and there isn't even, like, that much emphasis put on the, put on the fact that the references are there. So basically, there's there's the villain meeting in uh, at at the start where you know Ralph's little support group, and that's got a mess of villain characters from other video games, and we also see a fair number of uh, them in Grand and um, uh, Grand Gaming Station, Grand Central Station. I can't I forget what they call it now. Game Central Station. There it is. Um, but again, it's all background. They're all just kind of there. The characters themselves are not stopping to look at them and go, whoa, ah, and then doing these massive interactions with them. The only other example is Qbert, and you don't have to know who Qbert is for his part to function in the story and to still be funny in the story for where it's appropriate for him to be funny. And 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 besides that, that like they were there were not many because by and large, the first Wreck It Ralph had video game worlds that were very much evocative of specific eras and types of games, but they were original creations. Like Heroes Duty was very much evocative of what was at the time the sort of the current trend of first person shooters. You had Sugar Rush, which was more evocative of the '90s, early 2000s, just cart gaming kind of craze. Wreck-It Ralph was very obviously a ripoff on, on Donkey Kong from a structural standpoint. So you, you, they were reaching for references, but they were still original creations that evoked these things. So right off the bat, it kind of rubs me the wrong way when they get in the internet and immediately we are seeing Amazon. And now let's have basically a Google autofill joke. And look, to be fair, it's not the world's worst joke, but there are few things that will age any film faster than trying to seem up-to-date and modern. 
And that's what this is feeling like with these references. Uh, and it, that that's why I'm cringing throughout, but even those things, because when like when I saw that stuff in the trailer, I didn't think I was going to do another video on it because that I saw that sort of stuff in the previous trailer, and it annoyed me then. I didn't think this annoyed me enough to do another thing, but then, <laughs> then we get this, and a lot of people ripped into the Emoji Movie for its blatant product placement for things like Just Dance and Candy Crush. And I can't even remember what else. I, I My kid watched the movie, rented it, and I half paid attention for as long as I could stomach it. But that got a lot of heat. And for some reason, when Disney does it, but technically these aren't product placements because nobody paid to have their product there because these are all things that happen to be owned by the same company. How scary is that in the first place? That somehow the reaction that I primarily saw to this was, wow, how awesome, that's cool. And you know what, I'm not even necessarily, I'm not, I don't want it to seem like I'm mad at fans for seeing it, this and liking it. Honestly, I, if you like something I don't like anytime, good, awesome, I'm happy for you. I wish I could have liked it. I prefer to like things. As much as I bitch, I don't actually enjoy not liking stuff. But it, it was just so weird to me, that polarized reaction, because it, I, I, don't really see that big of a difference between what the Emoji Movie got ripped to shreds for doing and what this is doing. And in my mind, it's made all the worse by having one of your, who appear to be two main characters, literally look over all the other Disney products that your audience could be shelling out money for and going, Wow, isn't this so awesome? Disney is really good at marketing. They have been for a long time. And basically, anytime you see any Disney product, whether it is an actual Disney movie, a Pixar movie, whether it is Marvel, whether it is Star Wars, whether it's Muppets, anytime you see any of those movies, there are there is 50 million tons of merchandise that exists that can benefit off your enjoyment of that thing. But by and large, those, those films don't stop themselves in the middle in order to cross-promote other things available under the same corporate entity. Like, this is insanity! What I just witnessed. This was madness! And then there was the extended Princess joke, which, like, on a metatextual level, I want to like this joke. Like, I, I want to be like, oh, good on Disney for like acknowledging some of the weirdness in their things, but it's so weird and ham-fisted and this, this weird lampshade hanging, and again, still ultimately feels like more of a marketing exercise because it, it feels like just a way to shove all the princesses in and then to now be able to market Penelope in the princess line because the princess is all accepted. That's what it feels like. Even though on a meta-textual level, I can look at what the scene is doing and go, and, and you like get behind the theory of a little bit of poking fun at the way princesses have in the past been utilized in Disney products, but I, I, because I saw this shot before that, I, my, like every cynicism part of my brain was firing the hardest it has fired in a while. And I just, oh my, I, this is not a phrase I use. I don't use this phrase. I make a point of not using it because it annoys me, but I, I can't think of anything else. I can't even. I just can't even. I, oh my God. And if I'm gonna stick another caveat at the end of this, and this is not me expressing hope, because now after two trailers, I don't have a lot, um, or any, honestly, if, if it wasn't for the fact that my kid also loves Wreck-It Ralph and is going to want to see this, I wouldn't be going to the theater to see this now. But what I'll add on the end is that so far, 
including what we've seen, they appear to be isolated to a few set pieces. It is distinctly possible that the entire extended Disney thing, including the princesses, makes up no more than, say, three minutes of the total runtime of the film, and it's a one-off lark. That is distinctly possible. That doesn't, in my mind, really make it any less cynical, but it may be a brief divergence as opposed to one of the major set pieces of the entire film, which in my mind would be magnitudes worse. And we still don't really have a, a proper sense of the plot of this thing. And again, to be fair, looking back at the original um, trailers for the original film, we only had a very vague sense of plot from those trailers. And actually, I didn't rush out and see the first Wreck-It Ralph in the theater because the trailers didn't really sell me. I don't think it had the best trailers. But I still think those trailers were better than this. So even grading on the curve of, oh, the trailers for the first film didn't seem all that good, I still can't stand this. And then, of course, we have the Capper joke that feels like they just were all over the Reddit page, the, the Reddit movies subreddit, and just saw that and then inserted that into the film. And, like, I... Again, it's not an awful joke, but it already feels outdated because it's a joke I've been reading for months now ever since the title was announced. So it still has that issue of trying to be really of the moment and up to date and already feeling old because that's what tends to happen when you try and do that. And, and also beyond the fact that it somehow may, and again, in my mind makes it worse having a character say, breaks the internet, it's kind of a thing. It's not anymore. Like it was, what, a year? Two years ago? How long ago did Kim Kardashian break the internet and it was a thing for a hot minute? Like it's not now. I'm sure it was when the script was being written, the first storyboards, storyboards were being done, but it's that kind of instantly outdated stuff along with the cynicism of the of the intercompany marketing that I just I love the first film it's one of my favorite Disney films it is touching and it is beautiful and the end of it makes me cry in the best way and oh dear god I don't want to see the sequel now so what are your thoughts about the newest trailer for Wreck-It Ralph 2? Ralph breaks the internet and then makes a meme joke about it. Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's all the stuff that you can do, such as like and subscribe. I've got a Patreon. You can support me there. And follow me on Twitter and listen to a podcast, buy t-shirts, blah, 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 blah. Links for all that stuff is down in the description. So until next time, this council is adjourned.